Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and an empty workspace in Fusion 60. I'm just going to do some constraint things today with rectangles and constraints and yeah, just show some ideas for you. Uh, like, I love to share these. Uh, first of all, as always, a disclaimer, I'm not a professional user. I'm just a fun hobby user. I would have a fun, a stupid hobby user is most probably the correct uh, uh, denomination of me. But I'm going to do some constraints. If you're already a skilled user of Fusion, yeah, just skip this video. If you're new, have a look around. Enjoy some of the stupid things I do. I'm quite a sketch. Going to do it yet. Just on a front plane. It's not that necessary where I do it. I'm going to make two rectangles. I'm going to make a rectangle out here. We're going to do some constraints for the rectangle. I'm going to do a second rectangle, do it a three-point rectangle. So I get it on an angle, just for the fun of it. And we can have a look immediately here. Um, the one that here has some very simple constraints. Horizontal or vertical is as simple as possible. But when we start to uh, move things around, you need parallel and you need a perpendicular constraints. So some other things. Now, they are floating around in Spain, so let's see, I want to anchor this to origin point, I don't want to anchor it directly. One way to make sure this line stops moving around is use a coincident constraint between the line and the origin point. This will make uh, this point here, I can't move this up and down anymore, this is now constrained. I can do a similar thing with horizontal between this origin point and this corner. This means this way now, here you can see the constraints become visible. Here is basically none of the constraints or the coincident constraint we added is not so visible. And this can be a bit confusing if you go back into design and try to find how did I constrain things? Where, what is this horizontal thing here? You can also click them and uh, it will both, both highlight. And you can find the constraints again by clicking on points and holding down. You should pop up things and like that. So, but I'm going to undo things and go back. Undo. So now we are back to the things are not constrained. Here, I like to add a line. Let's do it a construction line. This is how I use construction lines. Do a line here. Going to do horizontal vertical constraint. Once again, I can do a line here. Up to here. And I add a horizontal vertical constraint. It's very visible now how the constraint is constructed. This construction line here is holding this corner of this rectangle uh, in a horizontal position to the region point. And if I need to, yeah, I can move up, I can move it sideways, but I cannot move this line here. And if I know more and don't need the constraint, but they made some mistakes, I can simply delete the line, highlight the line, and hit delete on the keyboard. And the line is removed, and with the line, the constraint it disappears, and I can go back to change things. So, yeah, construction lines are very useful for visualizing constraints, in my opinion. Oh, I got two lines. I'm going to back up. Line from here up to here. Horizontal vertical. Lock it like that. We can add some dimensions, too. Uh, let's do it with 100. Let's do that. Also the same, I'm going to pick up a dimension over there, like that. We can add this, uh, give this an angle dimension for the fun of it. Let's do it 60. Or the other way around, let's do it 40. Get a bit of sharper angle upwards. Uh, so, we have done this. Now, okay, of course, we can add a dimension where we want. But let's say I want to split these rectangles into multiple parts for some reason. When we get to high count, of course, I want to use rectangular pattern and not even sketch. I want to use one of the features. But sometimes you simply want to split this uh, rectangle down the middle. And I'm going to do one thing. You can see these profiles are flashing the whole time. So I'm going to turn off show profiles. This is something very useful if you're going to do uh, surface extrudes or thin extrudes. You don't need profiles for that. You only need the lines. So if you're going to do a sketch that will only be used for surface extrudes and other stuff, you can sometimes turn off show profiles because you don't need the profiles. But if you're going to use a normal extrude, you need to click on show profile after before you are finished with a sketch or you will not be able to uh, do a normal solid extrude or solid revolve because there is no profile. Anyway, let's do a line. Split it down the middle, it's quite simple. Just activate the line command, follow the line until you see the triangle. That's the midpoint constraint. Do it, um, I want a normal line. Turn off construction line. I'll split it in two. I can do the same thing on this one. You can see it goes over here. That's quite easy. We now have 
split this into two parts it will follow along independent on how we add dimensions of course we could add a dimension and dimension is and divided by two but it's quite crowded with them so sometimes this is of course dependent on the design intent i'm just going to show you some stuff so this is how i divide it into two but let's say we want to divide it into three dividing it three of course we need some more lines we'll at least two more lines we know the middle line is not very useful. You can see I'm looking, so it pops up the perpendicular constraint. You can do the same on this. Perpendicular, perpendicular. I'm gonna make this rectangle a bit larger on the back. Oh, things are moving around. You can see I can move things around now. I can't move the center line here. We're gonna use the center line, but I'm gonna turn that into a construction line because it will not be part of a splitting here, like that. So what do we know when we divide things into three? We know that these dividing lines here are going to be symmetric around the center line here. We could use uh, there's a symmetric constraint. Uh, so symmetry constraint, I normally don't use that because I will need to do more things. I'm going to do a line, construction lines from midpoint to midpoint and simply tell fusion midpoint constraint between these two lines. This means that these two now are constrained to the center. You can do the same thing over here, like this. And once again, midpoint constraints, like that. But still, uh, they are not constrained in any, well, like the width. We should follow along as we change the size of a rectangle. But simply said, we want one, two, three. We don't divide the three parts. That means the length of this line here, or the distance from this line to here, should be the same as the distance from here to here. So let's add one more line. The L on the keyboard, make one line here. Do the same over here. And just use the equal constraint. We make this line equal to this line. And we do the same over here. We have now split it into thirds. We don't need a third line over here because if the distance from if this, these are symmetric and we have one distance here, it means we have the same distance over here. We can now move things along. If you want to check things with D for dimension, you're going to do this. Do right click and do a driven. Let's pop it down here. Do the same here. Do the same here. Or you can say, they, see, they are the same. If I change now, they update and they stay the same. So this is using constraints. And we have the same thing over here. So that's dividing by three. Let's say one split it in four parts. We can talk about profile just to have a look. We now have three profiles. We have three profiles. Turn off show profiles. And we're going to split this in four. I don't need these, I don't need these, I don't need these, I don't need these. Of course, if you split into four, this line becomes useful because split in two and split in two. So we are splitting now in two. We want to split in the middle here, but we do not have a midpoint constraint anyway here because there's one long line. What can we do to break up this line? We have a command up here in the modify, you normally find it down here. I moved it up to the menu, so you can use it a bit faster. Click on break. You can see there's a red cross where it will break the line I'm highlighting. Doing that. It says we lose some constraints. There's a warning. And you can see, I'm going to turn off, that we can now move this sideways. Because we lost the horizontal or perpendicular constraint. We can choose, of course, in this case, we can use a horizontal vertical constraint. If we do the same thing over here, I'm going to break here. Uh, a horizontal vertical will not work. We can now move this line sideways of this. Here we need to use a perpendicular constraint. And now we're back to constraining things. Move this, which moves up and down. Do the line command, find the midpoint, and go straight down. Sorry, not construction, normal line. Do the same, find the midpoint. Find the midpoint. Find the midpoint. Turn on the profile just to show you. So now we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this is what you can do a bit with constraints. We should not follow along as we resize the rectangle. The constraints will make things move like we want. And of course, we can simply turn this into construct geometry. Do C for circle. If we want to put, we can put circles here. So we now have three. We could of course also mark this and make them equal. We now have three circles, but we will be evenly spaced on one third like this. 
in other ways of course do not over complicate your sketches too much if you like uh, try and prove for concepts i will most probably just do one and then pattern but sometimes you like to want to try out things so i'm now going to undo things and back up a bit back 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 until we get back to we had to complete uh i'm gonna back until this line is like that so we are back on delete that delete that delete that so now we are back to two normal rectangles let's say we want to place a rectangle centered inside of this can we do that yes let's do rectangle let's start here there are a couple different ways to do this nice way this depends on much you want to see in the screen how easy you want to go back and edit things we can do two diagonals diagonal from here to here do a diagonal of the small rectangle and simply use midpoint between these two this is a very clean version you can see it now stays in the middle you can of course make it larger than the other one and stuff like that but it will stay centered in the middle of things you can see it moves along you want to do the same thing up here you do a rectangle once again three point rectangle and i'm going to deliberately make it a bit off dimension like that so first thing we need to do we need to make it parallel then we can make two lines do even construction lines from here to here and the small rectangle from here to here once again midpoint constraint and it gets constrained to the middle i'm going to undo and go back a bit so i get back to only have a rectangle here in this case i'm just going to delete these two lines so we are back to free floating another option you sometimes see uh, people mentioning they can use for in this case it's a bit harder and this doesn't work here but here we can use a horizontal vertical constraint uh, the midpoint doesn't show up so we hold down shift find the midpoint do the same on this line hold down shift oh sorry where is the midpoint can do the same thing here and we have now made this control like this the problem is of course this can be a bit hard it adds a lot of constraints and stay stuff and it can be a bit hard to find later so i'm gonna let's go back i'm gonna do the two last one instead i'm gonna make a line l for line construction line from here to here and add a horizontal vertical constraint to that line that is now making the same thing as these two uh, horizontal vertical constraints here so it stays in the middle and of course in the case over here making a line construction line from midpoint here to midpoint here from midpoint here to midpoint here then adding the perpendicular constraints if i already parallel so adding perpendicular constraints to these lines means you're locking this little rectangle in the center of the other one so it depends on how much you need to put in the sketch and how messy you want things to be i'm simply going to delete all these things and go back we're going to delete that horizontal constraint can remove uh, these points too let's see if i can hit only the point and not the constraint like that so we're back to clean uh, of course i like stupid geometry so a bit there's a bit of a fun way to do things we're going to make a line we make a line from this corner up to here from this corner down to here tell fusion two things these lines they are supposed to be equal the second thing we want we want to make them parallel if you do this you are back to having a center constraint rectangle with uh, the corners basically lost you can see i can move it around if i don't move it too far it can flip and do strange things like most things in fusion but this is a bit of a fun way of constraining a rectangle to the center of another rectangle so that's that all i wanted to show you i think so this is a bit about uh, splitting rectangles, constraining rectangles, and how I think about things and what you can do with constraints. See, I have added no dimensions. I'm just drawing in these shapes with constraints. With that said, I hope you found something useful, and I hope to see you around. Goodbye.